guys friends it's emily welcome back to my youtube channel or thank you for stopping by if you happen to be here for the first time in today's video i am going to be sharing with you my top breast pumping tips so without further ado let's jump right into the video my first tip for you today is to use duckbill valves when you're pumping if you're not sure what duckbill valves are then i'm going to pick some up right here these are duckbill valves and usually if you have a medela pump, medela pump comes with its own little valves, but you can interchange them with these duckbill valves. And these provide so much more suction. So the duckbill valves are about $8 for six pieces. And I would change mine out every like three weeks, depending on how many times that you pump per day, you need to change them out. Tip number two is do not, I repeat, do not look at how much you are pumping. I cannot stress this enough. I've been through it. Um, it's really hard not to look at your bottles and gauge oh my gosh am i getting enough am i getting as much as i did last time i have to get this much in order to meet how much i want to pump for the day but i know that it's hard but all of those things circulating in your head comparing how much you pumped so far to how much you pumped last time etc all that is just going to cause unnecessary stress and stress inhibits oxytocin and oxytocin is what's responsible for letdown and all of that combined is just going to be no good for your mood stress output, oxytocin, all that stuff. So don't look at how much you are pumping. If it's enough for you to just make sure that you don't look down there when you're pumping, then go with that. But if you need to wear a cover, you can do that. Or one hack that I found is you can put baby socks up over the bottles. So then you don't have to wear a cover or anything. And if you look down, you can't see how much you're outputting because the baby sack is up over the bottle. Pumping is extremely, extremely mental. I found that honestly, it's more mental than physical. So anything that you can do, anything that you can do to make it mentally more easy on yourself and less stressful as possible, do it. Tip number three I have is know your best breast shield fit. So when I first started pumping, I figured that the size of the shields that came with my breast pump kit, it came with, I think, a 24 millimeter and then a 27 millimeter. And I figured that women fit in either of those sizes. So I have really small breasts. So I assumed that I was going to be size 24. And I always struggled with pumping. Um, even when I was engorged, I would have a hard time getting milk out, but I just thought that, oh, it's just my body. My body doesn't respond to a pump. And then once I started exclusively pumping for my son and doing more pumping for him because he was having a hard time breastfeeding, I looked into more research and I found that there's many, many more nipple sizes out there and thus depending on your nipple size you'll have a ultimate fit in terms of breast shield size so i measured my nipples <laughs> and you're supposed to measure the diameter of your nipple not your nipple and areola just your nipple itself Legendary Milk, if you don't follow their Facebook page or Instagram page, they have a ruler, um, like a printout ruler that you can use to measure your nipple. And then I think Medela, their website has um, a measurement tool as well. And so I ended up going down to a 19. Getting down to the 19s helped my output so, 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 so much um, because the 24s were way too big. So it wasn't properly drawing my nipple into the, into the funnel or whatever. Um, 
and same with the 21 and the 19 is so much better. Tip number four is to get a very supportive, hands-free pumping bra. And my favorite is right here. This was my second one. I went through two pumping bras. My first one is right here and it lasted, oh, it lasted probably 12 months or so. A lot of pumping, but then it started to get stretched out where the flanges go in and then it wasn't supportive to the flanges and then I wasn't getting good suction. Tip number five is to do hands-on pumping and or massaging before you pump. Those moms who are pumping while at work, massaging beforehand probably is not an option as I know that you have very limited time to pump and then get back to your job duties. But for those moms who stay at home or have a little bit more time to pump, massaging before pumping is such an awesome way to have your milk flow more readily. I would massage every single time before I pumped, mostly because I was extremely prone to plug ducts. And that not only helped prevent plug ducts and mastitis, but it really helped my milk output as well. Hands-on pumping is another awesome way to help with milk output, especially for those who have a hard time with just letting the pump do its work. Sometimes women need a little bit of extra help to get all that milk out. My tip here is either massage before you pump, or if you can't massage before you pump, then do hands-on pumping. And if you can do both, if you can massage before you pump and then do hands-on pumping as well, then you're going to be golden. A tip to add on to this is also use a warm compress before you pump preferably 20 to 30 minutes before you pump, but sometimes I would put a warm compress on as quick as five minutes before I pumped and I really do feel like it helped prep my breast <laughs> to have the milk flow more readily. So you have a couple of options for warm compresses. You can get the little, I think these are from Lansano, yeah. Um, these little like beady things and you can heat these up in the microwave and then put them in your bra. So a hack that I used for months and months and months was to fill a clean diaper with water, let it soak up all the gel and you'll cut off pretty much all of this plastic and just leave this center piece. So you cut off the little bit of plastic here at the top of the diaper, all of this down here, the back tabs, this part right here. So then it's just one straight piece and then fill that up with water and then microwave it. It can get hot, so I wouldn't microwave it for a super, super long time, but then it's long enough so it will cover your entire breast. I did that every single time before I pumped and before I nursed, and it was amazing what it did for my output. So I highly recommend doing that. Tip number six is to take a video of your baby in order to stimulate a letdown. If you're nursing, then you could take a video of your baby breastfeeding, or if you are an exclusive pumper, then what you can do is take a video of your baby sleeping or taking a video of you cuddling with your baby. I took several videos of Landon suckling and then you can see in the video when my letdown occurred because he would start doing those nutritive sucks and he would start gulping and then I would play that video when I'm pumping. That would make my letdown happen faster when I'm pumping because it would kind of be simulating the same thing, only I'm using the pump versus me nursing my baby. So that might be a good option for you. Or just looking at pictures of your baby, having a shirt of your babies or a little blankie that smells like them. Those are all wonderful ways that you can get that oxytocin flowing and help that letdown occur quicker. Next tip is to never pump when you're overly stressed or upset. For those moms who are on a pumping schedule, if they're an exclusive pumper, or for those who have to pump on their lunch break and they have no control over when their lunch break is, 
this could be really hard to avoid. So say you're really stressed about a work deadline, um, but you know that you have to pump at noon because that's when your lunch is every single day and you have no choice but to do it. In that case, then I would try to just take five minutes and do some meditation, listen to music, close your eyes, try to relax as much as possible. If you go into pumping, being stressed or overwhelmed, upset, it is going to majorly impact your ability to let down and impact your output. And then that will of course stress you out further. That could impact your output for the next time because you're gonna be concerned about, oh, I didn't pump as much last time. Oh, am I gonna pump as much this time? And then over time, if you let that affect you, then it is going to affect your milk supply in the long term. I dealt with this. Pumping is so mental. It's, it's insane how mental it is, especially when you know you have the milk, but you can't get it out. It is one of the most annoying and stressful things ever. For those who are on not on a super strict pumping schedule, if you're really stressed or really upset, take 20 to 30 minutes to calm down a little bit, listen to music, take a walk, try to do something that you enjoy, clean something that will help to relax you, bring those stress hormones down, bring your blood pressure back down, your heartbeat down. My next tip is to do something that you love while pumping. Pumping is a huge commitment, sacrifice, labor of love. I've done it. It is one of the hardest things I've ever done to make pumping a more enjoyable experience. I would always eat something when I'm pumping. Um, so I would have like special snacks set up for myself that I can only eat when I'm pumping. So that would be something to look forward to. And then I would also have specific shows that I would watch only when I'm pumping. For instance, I watched, I pretty much marathon watched seasons one and two of The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu when I pumped and I only allowed myself to watch that show when I was pumping. And <laughs> it was, it was awesome. Um, even though pumping was super, super hard, I at least had that to look forward to. I had to look forward to my snacks and I had The Handmaid's Tale to look forward to. Um, and it was kind of just like scheduled me time. And I feel like even though that was such a difficult time for me and it was very taxing, I do kind of miss that, that it was scheduled time in my day to just do something, even though I was doing something for Landon because I was pumping milk for him, it was me time too. Okay, my next tip is check your membranes often. I already talked about the duckbill valves, so check those to make sure that they're not getting too open. So with duckbill valves, there's a little bit of, and I'll insert a picture up here, there's a little bit of a slit in the top and a little bit of a slit is okay, but when it gets too open, then the suction isn't going to be as strong and that's when you need to the other thing that I would check often is your tubing. So with tubing, um, if you have a pump and style like I do, I don't know how it really works with the Spectra pumps, but the tubing that goes into those little holes, um, I'll insert a picture also, the tubing can get kind of, it's not frayed, but the tubing can get kind of stretched out so then the suction isn't as strong. So what I would do every once in a while when I feel like I would be pumping less milk and I had no other reasons as to why that was happening, my duckbill valves were good, etc. I wasn't stressed, etc. I would check to see if the tubing was maybe getting a little bit too stretched out. And then what I would do is I would just snip off the ends and then the tubing would be good as new. If you need to buy replacement tubing off of Amazon, I have gotten the May Mom brand, the Nini Supply, and then the Medela tubing. The Medela tubing is the best. It's expensive. I think it's $20 for replacement tubing, but it is top shelf. And then the next best brand, I have two right here, is the May Mom brand. 
this one. And then crap, if you want crappy tubing, the Nini Supply one is super crappy. The tubing stretches out so quick and it's just, it just doesn't have good suction even when the tubing is brand new. So if you can spend the money, if you need replacement tubing, get the Medilla. And then the next best is the May Mom. Don't get the Nene Supply one. It sucks. Just don't do it. Don't. I would love to know from you what the most difficult aspect of pumping is for you. So put it down in the comments. Let's chat with each other and let's try to work through those issues together. So my next tip is if you have trouble with your nipples swelling when you're pumping. I had this issue. I also had elastic nipples, which is when your nipples are just really stretchy, elastic, and they start to overly stretch out and they end up hitting the back uh, the pump flanges. So what I would do to help with my nipple swelling is I would coat the inside of the like the funnel. Um, I would coat this part with like a nipple butter. And I use the Mother Love nipple cream and this stuff. This stuff was golden. That's what I would do before every single time I would pump and it would help prevent my nipples from swelling really bad and then it would help prevent any nipple pain within the funnel, the, the flange funnel. So I highly recommend that if you're one to have nipples that swell a lot or get pain with pumping. If your nipples get too swollen when you're pumping, it can kind of cut off your blood supply and then that can impact your milk output. So one thing also that I would do when I would pump, when my nipple started to swell, is I would cut off suction of the pump. So the pump would be running, but my, my nipple wouldn't be going into the pump. And I would just kind of let my nipples kind of rest for a little bit and the blood supply would go back to normal again. And then I would resume pumping. It seemed like that really helped. Um, so I just thought that I would throw that one tip out there for you too. My next tip is to store your pump parts either in a cooler or in the fridge during the day so you only have to wash them once at the end of the day. I think the rules might be a little bit different for newborns as I think that since their immune systems are so brand new and you don't wanna mess around with the possibility of them getting bacteria or germs. For older babies, I've heard that it's perfectly acceptable to just wash pump parts at the end of the day and then I know that there's rules for sanitizing as well. Be sure to input recommendations down below in terms of how often to wash pump parts and then how often to sanitize. And that's honestly just a personal decision. You are away from home when you're pumping, bring a cooler with you to keep your pump parts cool. And then for those who are staying at home and pumping, you can just store your pump parts in the fridge. For those with Medela pumps, I'm not sure how it works with Spectra pumps, but for those with Medela pumps, when you're all done pumping and you're maybe putting your milk away for the day, turn your machine back on with all these parts detached, turn your pump back on, and then let that run for a few minutes and it will push out all of the condensation and it will help dry up any condensation in the tubes as well. Just a tip for you out there that will help keep the longevity of your tubing, also prevent bacteria from growing in your tubing. One extra tip that I have for you is to hand express at the end of each pumping session if you have the time to do it. Hand expression is something that's so, so, so important and it's really easy to do once you get the hang of it. I would do this sometimes after pumping. I would just open up the intake off the um, the top part of the pump parts and then I would just hand express into the bottle and even droplets can go a really long way if you add that up over how many times a day you pump. 
Okay, and one final tip I have for you is if you are very new to pumping, I would test your milk for high lipase. Lipase is an enzyme that helps to break down fat to help your baby digest your milk. Some moms have higher lipase than others. If you have really high lipase, then it can kind of create a weird smell as well as taste to your breast milk. It is completely safe. There's nothing wrong with your breast milk, but it will smell different and it will taste different as well. Some babies don't care, but some babies will snub it. When you pump your milk, you're not going to be able to smell the lipase. It's when the milk has cooled that it's going to give off that strange odor. So what I would do is I would pump some milk put it in the fridge, let it sit, let it cool, smell it. And if it has kind of a weird soapy, almost sour smell, then you most likely have high lipase. I had high lipase and it definitely, like the milk smelled bad. Like it smelled like sour milk, but there was nothing wrong with it. You have the high lipase and your baby won't touch it. Then you can scald your milk before freezing it. I know that's an extra step and it does kill some benefits to your breast milk, but obviously breast milk is going to be the ultimate choice no matter what. So if your baby snubs high lipase milk, then you can scald it before freezing and I can include a resource on how to do that as well. And just more information on high lipase. I'll include that in the description box. Okay, so that is going to be all for me today. If you liked any part of this video or found it helpful, would you please give it a thumbs up? And if you want to see more videos from me, then be sure to subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one. And don't forget to put a comment down below regarding what has been your most difficult aspect of pumping. And I would love to chat with you and try to help you work through that issue. Happy pumping. Bye.